guys, today we're here to talk about how to be a YouTuber. Because he totally knows. He definitely has conscious thought. He edits everything. If you guys didn't know, if you guys didn't watch my last episode, this is episode 301. And we're not even a year into this YouTube channel yet. And this is the 301st episode thus far. Fuck. Bless you! You are so excited for this, and so am I. So I think a lot of people on Earth want to be a YouTuber. Like, everybody and their moms wants to be one, and that's kind of a fact. Like, I would say this is probably the most saturated thing on Earth. I think there's 1.3 billion YouTube channels, and yeah, usernames count, but still, like, that's just a huge number. And there's tons of minutes uploaded, or hours uploaded every minute. Now, don't let that deter you, and like, just to start off, if you're at all thinking, hey, is it too late? For me to start on YouTube? Uh, absolutely fucking not. Uh, there's like tons of people who are still getting internet all over the world. So there's gonna be probably billions of people coming onto the internet and going on YouTube and shit like that. And it's never too late because you could probably be better than a lot of people. Uh, people! Because, uh, not gonna lie to you, there's a lot of shit on YouTube. M the vast majority of it is fucking awful content. So if yours is good at all, that definitely can give you an audience. And just because one person is succeeding doesn't mean somebody else can't, right? Like there's enough people on earth watching for uh, for all of us. Like if they're watching one video, there's no reason why they couldn't watch yours as well. So I hope that is good to get started with. And actually, maybe there's another couple points before I read your questions. Um, I, I think there's gonna be a lot of equipment questions or maybe not, I have no idea. Um, the best camera you can get on earth is the one that you already have, okay? You probably have heard that a million times from other people if you've searched this, or if this is the first time you're ever hearing that, that's the truth. The best camera you have is the one that's on you, all right? I'm pretty sure I stole that from Casey Neistat, but he's right. I have multiple cameras. Let me just go grab them really quick. I totally came unprepared. So just to start off with, when I started this channel, I didn't even have this fucking dog, by the way. I think it was about 10 months ago. It was May 30th, so whatever. And what I started off with was this. Not an iPhone 10, but an iPhone 6S Plus. And there were newer phones that were out, so that wasn't the newest phone. And so what I did was I got a, uh, like a little tripod, like any type of tripod's fine, and you get like a phone attachment. I put that on, like the phone attachment on this, obviously, put this on a tripod, and then I attached a lav mic, a nice cheap lavalier mic. You can get these for like a really good one, it's like $20, okay? Don't get the super expensive one. Just plug this right, this is how every single person gets started, okay? Right here. You plug it in if you have to get the adapter, because iPhone, right? Plug that shit in, attach it to you right here, and you talk. That's literally all you have to do. And these have really good video quality. That's it. This is all you need to get started, okay? You don't need the MacBook Pro to get started in editing and shit like that. You don't need the iPad Pro to get started. All you need is the phone, because you can edit iMovie's on here. You can edit all your videos with this bitch right here. And here's the other cameras I have as well. I'll probably touch on these a little bit later into the video, depending on questions and shit like that, and explain why I have them and stuff. Really, they're just for multiple camera angles for recording podcasts. That's actually all I use them for now. But we'll see if I can apply those cameras into any of the questions. Let me go find the questions, because I don't prepare. Who does that? Okay, the first question is, how did I decide on what type of content I wanted to create? Well, for my first, I actually had a first channel from this one, okay? And I feel like that's a really popular thing to do is have one channel, right? And then get rid of it and start a new one. Once you figure out, like, that's not what you want to do, that's a, there's a huge chance that your first channel is not going to work out at all. Like, it's almost, uh, it feels like 100% chance, honestly, because, like, you're not going to have your voice or anything like that. So what I did was I decided by, I did the wrong thing first. I found out what was wrong. It was like a, a motivational teaching channel. You know how I have like those solo casts that I do every once in a while? That's what I was doing the whole time. It was very difficult, it wasn't very natural. Like when I do those, it's like I just sit down and I just talk. I don't have a script or anything like that. I just go off on a tangent and then I end it. With that, I try to come up with a script and do a video like once a week trying to do that and it was very difficult and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't even do one video a week, and now I'm doing, like, 14 videos a week. Easily. And I just kind of found out that I should do this type of content, like, where I make fun of shit. I had, like, a little epiphany moment when I was at Chipotle with my friend Jen. I was reading this guy's text messages, making fun of him. She's laughing, and I'm like, why don't I just record this? What I do naturally, like, just being myself on camera. And that's how I figured it out. She also said, I would assume you would want to create something you would enjoy and something other viewers would be interested in watching. Yeah, I want to create stuff that I would want to watch. Of course. 
Because if you want to see it, if you're interested in it, the likelihood of somebody else being interested in it is very, very high. Unless you're doing, like, shark knitting. That might be kind of cool. Actually, I would tune in. As well as trying to stand out so you're not copying other YouTubers. Um, copying is fine to an extent. You have to take what they're doing and then like a bunch of other people and base it off of them and then create your own originality from that. It's really like originality really doesn't exist. To be honest, you can take good things from everybody and create original content based off the little things and add your flair into it. Uh, a book that I learned that from is Steal Like an Artist. So if you guys are actually looking into like learning and stuff like that, definitely pick that book up. It's a one sitting read, super quick, can change your life, no joke. Question for the Q, that's not a Q&A, but all right. Explain your journey to 10K subs. Well, I'm at 12 now, baby. Mwah. Um, that was a week ago. How cute is that, huh? The journey was absolutely super difficult. Um, I'm gonna do it, try and do it like super quick here. So, starting off, not really knowing if it's gonna work, just trying different things here and there, not having an audience, like begging for 20 views a video, and then you just keep trying, 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 and then, um, it was just shit up until the third month, and then um, so a book I highly suggest reading is called The Dip. So I think there's gonna be probably maybe two people out of everybody who watches this ever, you know, for maybe for every thousand people, there's gonna be one person who watches this or like reads the book. The books that I recommend, because this could really help you out. So it's a book called The Dip by Seth Godin. If you read that and How to Steal Like an Artist, it could honestly change your entire life. I totally am dead ass serious. So I was three months in to my YouTube channel. Uh, I had like 265 subs in August of last year, okay? I read, and it was uh, like right at three months. And the dip talks about three months in, you're gonna wanna quit and all that stuff. So I reread the book, right? And the, the, right after I reread the book, I put out my first Nicole and Azan video. And the whole trajectory of my entire channel changed after that second, that one video, right? All it takes is one video, and then you go, and then you find out what works and what people are into, you find an audience, you start building it that way. But before that, it was just random, like taking my shit from my asshole and throwing it at the wall to see what would stick. And the majority of it didn't. Like, I had one video that hit a thousand, and it blew my mind. I was like, this is it! This is it! We made it! Mama! I'm a YouTuber now, right? A thousand, by the way, it's really, really good. Like, that's awesome, but it's, it's not like a, oh, like I have a video that's about to hit 500,000. Like, by the way, numbers mean nothing at all. Just throwing that out there. They mean everything and nothing at the same time. Hopefully, maybe I'll get into that in a little bit. How do you choose material to feature in your channel? Example, Love After Lockup or Freaky Eaters. Um, if it's, if I, like I'll watch, I'll give it probably like 30 seconds maximum because I don't want to spoil the video for myself. And if I can't make up anything funny, or like, because I don't have a script or anything, everything's an instant reaction, I have no idea what I'm going to say, whatever I think of instantly I say out loud, um, and if I can't see anything within 30 seconds, but if I do see something within 30 seconds, and there's another long gap in between to the next joke that I could come up with, it's not good. Because then I don't, I don't want to make it harder for myself, honestly. Like, to me, Dr. Phil is perfect, because like in the beginning, um, there's boom, 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 boom. They're just talking, they're giving out points about these people and they're hilarious. So I could just rattle off hilarious things super quick and to me that's perfect. So Dr. Phil is perfect for me, that's the perfect example. You promised to do the cheesy potato addict to Freaky Eaters, where's it at? How ironic, they're actually, you're about to do our last episode tomorrow of that, so. What kind of equipment do you need? Microphone, how much did you spend on equipment? Well, um, in the beginning, like I said, use a phone, Okay, so let's just say the phone's free, okay? You have a phone. If you're commenting, you have a phone. If you're commenting somehow, you have something with a camera. Use that camera and get a 10 to 20, $30 microphone for very good audio, and that's it. Nothing else, nothing else at all. But that's not how people work, am I right? Because if I was preaching, if I was listening to what I'm saying, right, whatever I was about to say right there, I have, so my camera, that I'm using. I'll just go get the box because I'm using it right now. Obviously, I'm not going to take it off. I'm not going to do that Casey Neistat thing where he switches cameras. He's way better than me. So the cost of everything I have right now, um, so I have, this is my camera. It's the the Canon 80D. This is just the box it came in. It's like a creator's edition. It's a very good uh, price, right? So the Canon 80D is an amazing camera, amazing autofocus, shit like that. It came with a uh, Rode Video Mic Go. I think that's what it's called. It's not the micro, it's the mic go. I also have the mic row. 
that microphone's awesome as well. And it came with like an adapter for the lens, and it has the kit lens, the 18 to 135, plus like a, a smooth zoom adapter and shit like that. Power zoom adapter. This was about $2,000. Um, all of my audio equipment over there that I use for my podcast is about $1,000. Um, MacBook Pro with the touch bar, 15 inch, $2,000. iPad Pro, $1,100. With all of my accessories, this GoPro is about $700. Bucks. Like, I have tons of like tripods, accessories. All my tripods, probably about another $300. This camera cost me only $100. It's a Canon RF, uh, R700, right here. I got it for $100. I think it's a $300 camera. And there's like <clears throat> all this, tons of other equipment. Let's just throw in another. $1,500 for all my other equipment. But everything I said right there, right, like all of that is our investments because my channel was growing, right? Like I did not, I didn't get this until December. Like I got this because it was growing. To increase workflow, because I was going to two videos a day. Like if you're not doing that, like this is, nowadays I absolutely need this. And I don't think this is a necessity to start with, Of course, you don't need an expensive, this was on sale by the way, so it was only $2,000 on sale. Which isn't bad for how much it does. Um, what I started on, I was editing off of a Mac, or an iPad Pro. And comparatively, like, the MacBook is worlds better, but this works. This is what everything was edited on, on every single video up until January. You're not going to see a quality difference at all, like there is no difference whatsoever. Because I'm using, there's, I know there's a question here of what software I use. iMovie. I use iMovie on my MacBook. I use iMovie on this. It's the same software. There's iMovie on your phone. Like, you do not need this. Like, I think people are going to be thinking, do I need Final Cut? Final Cut's $300. I don't have Final Cut yet. I am investing in Final Cut definitely in the next couple of months because I just got Apple Motion and they integrate really well together. Audio is the most important thing. So get a good mic, the lav mic, and connect it to your phone. Awesome audio, instantly, for almost free. 20 bucks to start a YouTube channel is fucking free. Like a lot of people, like my friend, she's like, oh, I'm not gonna start a YouTube channel until I get a camera. And I'm like, that's a terrible fucking idea because that's a huge investment, right? You can't even return it to Best Buy without getting a restocking fee. So I say start with your phone because you might not like it. Even though there's so much upside to YouTube, right? Like with money and fame, like what everybody wants. It's just, if you don't like it, it's not fucking worth doing. What's a good camera for YouTube? The best camera is the one you have on you. However, if you are looking to spend and get a camera that could be used for so many things, I, I do think, I'm gonna go with probably, okay, so the Canon 80D is a fuck, it's fucking amazing. It has the swivel out screen. It's so good. It's, a, it's not a full framed DSLR, but it's fucking awesome. I know they just came out Canon, like if I had like money to just spend on a vlogging camera, they have this new camera that came out. Look it up. It's a mirrorless 4K camera. Um, I think it starts at like 800 bucks. That is a, that's an awesome deal. The camera looks awesome. I've been watching a couple reviews. It looks amazing. So I highly suggest looking into camera or Canon cameras. Use whatever you know cameras you like. I don't use Sony. I'll, people a lot of people use Sony, but I'm going with Canon. I always will probably from this point on. I do suggest looking at also Casey's uh, video where he talks about cameras and there's diminishing returns on cameras. The higher up you go for spending money on cameras, the, le the less better they get, right? Diminishing returns. It doesn't get as good, just like if you're lifting weights and getting big, eventually it's going to be harder to get bigger, right? So it get, eventually it's harder to get a better camera the more you go. I'd say the best, like, this camera is so good for so many things you have to do interchangeable lenses and everything like that, I highly suggest taking a look at the ADD and you're going to use it for a long time. It's a very good investment if you really do need the camera. And speaking of investing in equipment, I just want to make the uh, statement that it's more exciting before you get the equipment, right? Like thinking about getting the camera or before I got the MacBook, it's so exciting before you get it, right? Obviously, they're amazing pieces of equipment and they're for work and I love them. I love using them. They're perfect. Perfect, right? But The feeling you have before you get them, the excitement, is far better than having them, obviously. Like, you're not going to be as excited having them every single day, so keep that in mind, that the excitement you have for getting that new piece of tech, the excitement you have 
is going to dwindle and they're just gonna be a piece of equipment eventually, right? Do I still use iMovie for editing? Fuck yeah, I do. iMovie is so good. It's fucking incredible. I can't even describe. If you haven't used it, it's so good. Only reason I'm getting Final Cut is because I bought Apple Motion for $50 and I want to, it integrates really well and I'm like starting to do like studio tours and more cinematic type things to where I do want to have a deeper level of editing. I, it's not gonna change, you guys probably aren't gonna notice anything on this channel until I start doing much higher production value things. So I, iMovie for you guys is so perfect. Especially cause it's free. What are you used to edit your videos with? iMovie. When is the series coming about studio tours? Oh, hi, baby. Uh, the first episode ever, he wants it to come out March 30th to align with his music. What equipment do you need? All you need, phone. You don't even need the mic, but I highly suggest having good audio, because when I didn't have good audio for those couple of days, people were going insane. I was going insane, because good audio will make somebody click off right away. Um, phone. That's all you fucking need. You can edit on here with iMovie. You can render the video, you can upload the video, you could do everything on this phone. Do you believe that YouTuber should shout out the other YouTubers that watch their channel? Fuck no, that is, um, there's no such thing as a stupid question, but that is absolutely ridiculous. Because imagine if I had like a million subs, or like if H3H Lee shouted out every YouTuber that watched them. That's insane, and so many people ask for shout outs, and like, that's probably not gonna happen, never ask for a shout out because that's not gonna happen. You can help people learn to post vids and shit, but you can't teach funny as fuck. Totally correct. And speaking of learning to post vids, stay tuned for the end of this video. I'm gonna give out the best tip at the end, by the way. If you even made it this far, God bless America. And I'm gonna press stop the recording and re start recording again, because these only have, by the way, DSLRs only have a uh, 30 minute recording time legally. I think there's certain ones you can bypass it with certain software, but keep that in mind when you buy a camera in case you wanna use this for like recording your podcast or something. You, you can't unless you keep walking up and pressing the camera again. Okay, so here we go. Did you advertise to your friends and family when you first started or did they find out later what, that you were a YouTuber? Um, I advertised to every single person, like everybody, because I had a first one that sucked. I think I still advertise to all of them, yeah, because I'm super open. I've always been super open on like social media and stuff, like transparent, telling everybody like the world, everything about me, because it's not really that exciting, honestly. Um, but when I started this channel, I literally made uh, a group chat of like 300 people or the maximum you could on Facebook and I was like, go subscribe to my channel and I think only like 50 people did. It's not bad though, like 50 instantly is pretty good. I highly suggest getting those first few subs because getting subscribers is so fucking difficult that I, I don't think the majority of people actually know how hard it is. Like, reaching a hundred is so fucking difficult. Just it, start a YouTube channel and try. Let me know how easy it is, okay? It took me a month to get a hundred, and now sometimes I can get a hundred in a day. There were times where it was like a, a week, and I lost two. No gain, negative two. Now, I think I had some on Instagram, but I get too many DMs, so I'm not even gonna look through them. Sorry if you did it, DM me a question. So, a big tip that I have before my really good one is so I just got this to record on my um to record the rest of like a second angle on my podcast. This is a Canon R700. I think they're like two to three hundred dollars. Try and get a used one. Mine was a hundred bucks. I got it used on like Let Go. Has the flip around screen and all that shit. So if you want to vlog super hardcore, let's see if we can get a. Well, you just you see everything. Okay, look at that. Things fucking dope. Actually, super impressed with how good it is. You just. Throw an SD card in this bitch. Uh, I, I do suggest getting a camcorder, especially if you can get it for a hundred fucking dollars. Um, you cannot attach a microphone to it because there's no like cold shoe or hot shoe or whatever that's called. It does have a microphone input, but that gets a little bit difficult. Um, what I did was, I, I also found this. This is an H1 Zoom handy separate audio recording device. You can put the lavalier mic directly into this, which is what I'm gonna do for like interviews and stuff when I do studio tours. Put the lavalier mic directly into this. Put the lavalier mic right on you, start recording, throw this on your po in your pocket, and now you have a wireless audio receiver, it's a mini SD card, and you just sync up the audio in post-production, and boom, you have amazing audio. So for this, this is a really good setup. So this brand new is $100, this is $200, and you have super good audio. Like, very good audio, video quality and audio quality. Like, this I'm gonna use for a very long time. I've heard of people using these for like, tons of years, okay? Match these two things up, and that's pretty ideal, honestly. So for a budget starting kit, 
First I say the phone, but if you want to step it up a little bit and get some stuff that could uh, be used a little bit differently, you know, this is a good setup. So Zoom H1 recorder, Canon R700. Um, I don't even think this is the newest model. And you can see the audio or the video quality if you wanted to on my Denal Theron podcast, uh, where my angle is this camera, her angle is the GoPro Hero 5. Why do I have the GoPro Hero 5? This is what I moved on to for my second camera. When I was doing YouTube, I uh, got like a metal frame housing that I attached. Uh, my hair, I'll show you really quick. So I attached it to this. You just throw it in this little bitch right here. I have the Rode Video Mic. Video Micro, I put it in here, it has a uh, cold shoe so I can attach the hot shoe to it, get the adapter you need for the GoPros because they're fucking assholes, put it in there, and now you have amazing audio and super good picture quality up to 4K. Do I suggest this build? Absolutely fucking not. Battery life sucks on GoPros. The uh, video files are absolutely huge at 1080p. Like, a, ten, a two hour podcast is like 70 gigs. With this, it's ridiculous. But, you know, the equipment, once again, it doesn't matter. If you got um, a cinema camera, right, a $6,000 C200, right, it wouldn't fucking make your videos better. It would make them look better, but the content is what matters, right? The stuff that you're delivering and the things that people are watching and listening to. So audio absolutely matters, but the video quality can slack a little bit and it'll be totally fine, as long as what you're providing has value. Whether it's entertainment, escapism, education, and that that's what matters. What doesn't matter is the camera. It really doesn't. Like, I could have grown this channel to what it is now and kept it going on just a phone and the lav mic, and I can guarantee that, because this, you guys aren't watching for this. You don't even know what camera I'm using. You don't know what editing software that I'm using. You would never be able to tell, because all I'm doing is jump cuts, like I just did right there to get to this. And, and like, don't be scared about editing and stuff like that. Like, to be honest, editing is fucking easy. It's the only thing, I just hate it, because it's like working in a factory line. You do the same thing every single time, and you're just like, jump cuts and shit like that. It is easy, you're splitting, deleting, making things work. It's super easy, super quick. Like, I've edited a video it, when I was in a rush in literally five minutes without reviewing it. It's, it can be that easy, and it is. It's just monotonous. So the main thing to worry about with YouTube, I highly suggest just being consistent. On YouTube, consistency is king. That's all they look for. It's like a TV show, right? If you were to watch, um, like if you're watching your favorite TV show that comes on every Saturday at 8 p.m., and next week, it just wasn't on, wouldn't you be like, ah, what the fuck? Right, like I get that. Like, once I say that, like it is important to be very consistent, but another thing to keep in mind is, it is okay to miss an upload. Don't fucking kill yourself because you missed an upload. It's like, it's okay to go off your diet here and there, don't let it become a habit. Don't miss tons of uploads because you missed one and now you think your channel is tanking, right? Just get back on the fucking horse and go back and do it. What I do, obviously, is two videos a day. And I'm stopping doing two videos a day. On Sunday, I'm doing only one for a little bit of a quality of life type thing. But try and be consistent. Like, back in the day, it was okay to do one video a week to make it. Nowadays, that's probably not gonna fucking happen, okay? I highly, highly suggest starting off with three videos a week. That might sound absolutely difficult to you, and it probably will be in the beginning. Very hard, especially making content. But when I see people who just start off making content, like friend, people out here, there's like four or five people out here who it's it's about one a week, right? And some people post one, and then two months later, they don't, even, they don't have anything else. Like That's really bad. YouTube sees that. The robot's listening. They have AI, they have an algorithm where they, they see who's putting in the work and they're bumping people up based on views. Even if it's 20 views, the next one will be bumped up prior to that because of that last video. And it's gonna keep growing and growing and growing, and that's what you're doing. You're growing something from nothing. You're creating something out of nothing, right? And you have to just work away at it and grind at it pretty much forever. So like, this career, if you want this to be a career, not just a hobby, it is one of the hardest things on earth because there are so many people that are doing it. Like, you could be anybody. Everybody from doing pottery, to comedians, to fishermen, to hunters, it doesn't matter. They all have YouTube channels. And we're all fighting for your attention, right? And if you're looking to do this, you're fighting for my attention, 
other people's attention, my mom's attention, like that's a real thing. So the main thing to do is to post and create as much as humanly possible. As much content as you can make till your eyes bleed. And even if your eyes are fucking bleeding, you still gotta make the next video, right? Because how badly do you want it, right? You could. There is a huge possible chance that you are better than 97% of all the people that are making videos. That is a huge possibility because only 3% of channels get over 10,000 subs. All right, that's what I've heard. And that seems very believable. The chance of you Doing it is very low, but if you stick with it and be consistent and try really hard and try and get better every single video, your chances go up drastically every single video you put up. It might feel worthless when you're doing it because tons of people aren't watching, but that's just not what it's about, okay? It's about growing an audience, a core audience, and your audience tells other people. And then just keeps growing and it should be slow, right? It should be hard. Because everything that's easy is not worth doing and everything that's worth doing is not easy. If you want this to be a career, it can be. You can call people cunts and whatever you want and make money from it, right? This is my full-time job, but if you're not doing it, and trying and like this has to almost be the number one thing you think about 24 7 it has to be a main priority because it's gonna take up a lot of time it's gonna take up a lot of your emotions and it's gonna stress you out and you see the fucking do it and don't think about it too much because like I don't have a script and back when I did have a script hello baby back when I did have a script on my old channel it was awful because I was thinking too much about it so my thing is you might be different than me you might need, you might need bullet points or notes and stuff like that I can't work that way. I can't work with what's planned. I don't even plan podcasts. Like I schedule them, but I don't have any questions ready. Nothing. Everything is off. It's all improv. I improv every single thing in my life. And if you think about it too hard and think about it too much, you're going to psych yourself out, right? It's like going to the gym. If you think about going to the gym and you think about how hard it's going to be and how hard the Stairmaster is going to be and, oh, I got I to gotta lift weights. It's going to hurt. You're going to psych yourself out or how hard and how long I'm going to take to edit this fucking video and the one before this I got to upload and then I got to go to the gym again today and there's all these things I have to do if I think about it too much and think about what I have to say it's just not going to come out I'm going to freeze up and I'm going to psych myself out so just don't think about it and just do have fun because I think it's going to get to the point where people don't look at you as a human anymore but in the beginning people do right they're going to understand Okay, this is his first channel. He's trying. You might get some haters, and of course that's going to happen. I, I post pictures of my haters, what they have said to me, you know, that people I know personally have said to me on Facebook. I post what they say on Instagram. I don't give a fuck to prove them wrong. Like somebody, for example, like there might be a lot of new people who are watching me here, and um, somebody said, oh, you just get six views on YouTube. Get a fucking life. Like people are, like making fun of me, but like... Now, this month, we got over 600,000 views, but imagine if I, like, listened to that person, or if I psyched myself out or anything like that, this would be over, I'd be back to a 9-to-5 job, I wouldn't be doing what I like, my life would feel like it has no purpose, because the purpose of my life prior to this was a means to an end, trying to find what I want to do for the, the future currently, right? So for the next 5-10 to 10 years, this is definitely what I'll be doing, right? Video making of some sorts, definitely comedy, but if I stopped when I was getting made fun of or wasn't succeeding, then I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Nobody would know who Miles is, because when they said that, I didn't even have this dog yet. Everything could have stopped. I could have, you know, sold my GoPro, all the equipment I had. I didn't buy the equipment, you know, prematurely, but the GoPro I did a little bit, because I kind of knew, I was like, eh, I, I could definitely do this. Um, but test it out. You know, uh, the likelihood, like your first video is gonna be absolute fucking garbage, and that's the truth. Uh, it's the likelihood of it being good is so hard. It's so hard to make a good video You have to get in the rhythm and find your voice like you know how long it took me to be able to throw up that throw up noise That you guys know on camera it took me forever how, how hard it was to yell on camera That's so difficult to be super exciting and like giving forth all that energy and just not giving a fuck and really being yourself Because this is really how I act in person like I don't even notice it like right when the camera gets turned on now I get more excited like there's things I won't do outside, but if there's a camera on me, I'm like, fuck it. Let's make it entertaining. Let's do this shit, bitch. Because now I have a reason. I have something to create. I have somebody to entertain, right? You feel me? And that might be the same thing for you. In the beginning, I was very, very nervous and scared. At 100,000 subs, I'm showing my first video I ever made. Um, and you could see how scared I was and how frightened, like my voice was cracky and I couldn't like 
get my thoughts together and it, it was scary because now I'm looking in the lens, right? This is a big lens. Like I was looking at my iPhone 6S Plus lens, which is like this small and this one's huge and there's a huge light behind it and I'm just staring right into the lens and it gets me more motivated now compared to when it, when it would turn on, I would like freeze up a little bit and get super scared. But you get used to things, you get better at them, you can progress at them. And if even if you don't want this to be a career, it's good to have it as a hobby because you can see progression every day. You might get a new view, you might get a new sub, like one sub a week, two sub a week is very good. Keep that in mind. Like there, like I said earlier, there's been a time where I just lost two subs. And the chance of failure for this, the percentile chance of failure is is very, very high. Uh, of course, failure is completely subjective. If I was to say, what would it take, like what are the percentile chances of you being able to make money within like, for me, I started making money about seven months into it and it replaced my full-time job. Um, I think the percentile chance is 1% or lower. I, I do think there was a little bit of serendipity involved in that, but I do also believe that I am very good at what I do. And so the serendipity and the consistency and trying and meshing it all together and preparing and getting ready for what I know could come and stuff like that kind of propelled it into this thing where the 1% chance it just happened to fall that way. Because if you talk to a lot of people who've been doing YouTube for even like four years, they, sometimes they don't see a penny. And it, it's very, it's not a lot of money, right? Like I, I definitely can't move out of my house with my mom. Like that's not where I'm at yet, but I will be. So just don't come into this expecting anything. Don't expect to have thousands of subs. Like don't ever expect that. Uh, make goals. Uh, once I hit my year, which is May 30th, I'm going to read what I had for my first channel, my, my goals for three, six, and 12 months I have written down in here. I wanna compare to see what really happened. Make goals, be realistic, but it's cool to be unrealistic because you know, something lucky could happen, you could find that right video that sets you off, it helps you explode a little bit. Like I'm not in the hundreds of thousands of subs yet, but when I started doing that 90 Day Fiance, sorry it's going on a little bit of a rant, but I don't really give a shit, it's my channel. Um, that's, when I found that, that's when it really started to take off. Right, I think I went from like 265 subs to like 1,000, like, I'm gonna say within a week, maybe, like, I just started doing those, and the views were crazy. That almost has 200,000 views on that video, and just kept doing them and getting that audience, and then moving on to another audience and trying to build up of all these other things, and everything eventually culminates, and I'm, I'm still a nobody. Like, I'm just a beginner, but I do think it's going to be very huge, and I want to help as many people do this as possible, because it's very difficult, it's not easy, but it's the best thing on earth. And I think a lot of people do want to do this, so I highly suggest giving it a shot. If there's any ounce of you that wants to do it, I don't care how fucking old you are, how young you are, the younger the better, which is true, right? If I started this, if I started this at 14, I definitely didn't have the confidence that I do now. Um, but get started, even if people are going to make fun of you, even if you're six years old, because imagine if in three years you get to 63 and you made a killer YouTube channel and that's your fucking full-time job but you get to quit your stupid job, whatever you're doing, right? Just imagine that. Just imagine all the doors that could open for you if you did it. Because if you stop, if I stop right now, my future is, to me, is over, right? Every future door closes and I feel like there's a ton that are opening every single time I post a video. Keep that in mind. I love you guys. I want you guys all to try. I want you guys all to try this. And that last tip that I was talking about, the very important one that it's, I see a lot of people fucking up with is this is how, this is how you get your video seen, right? For people to even see your good content, you need good titles. Titles are the most important thing on earth. If you don't have good titles, no, it's a search engine. YouTube is the second biggest search engine on earth. It's owned by Google, okay? I don't get my paycheck from YouTube, I get it from Google. So you have to learn SEO, search engine optimization. When I dropped out of college, for some reason, that's something I started to learn. For some, I have no idea why. I just started researching a bunch of things when I dropped out, and that was one of them. So you need to, unless you don't give a fuck, then don't. It's like saying if you wanna learn how to get in really good shape, don't, and you don't want to research diet, like fine, but it's gonna hinder your progress a lot. So search engine and thumbnails are very important. My thumbnails aren't that good whatsoever, but I'm working on them a little bit, you know, testing things, putting my little throw up stamp of approval here and there, making them trying to look nice, but that's not a big priority comparatively to the title, right? But I do TV shows, so I just take a screenshot of the video as the thumbnail, because people are looking for that video, so I'm not gonna like bamboozle them by putting something else in the thumbnail, you feel what I'm saying? 
And um, don't, and don't clickbait to an extent, clickbait to make them click, but also have what you're clickbaiting be in the video, right? I don't clickbait ever except on Instagram when I just put a stupid caption, and for some reason people take me seriously with those stupid captions, but whatever. Yeah, guys, that's all I have for this. It was a long one, but I, I'm very passionate about YouTube, and I think everybody can be. I think that it's possible for every single person to be successful at it, but I, I know for a fact that, pff, what, like I said, nine, let's say 95%, that goes with everything though. 95% of people are fat, 95% of people are poor, and 95% of people on YouTube are gonna fail. I'm not saying I'm successful. I, do I feel successful? Currently I do, but is there a huge possibility that in a year from now, I'll fail? Yeah. Do I think it's gonna happen? No, but is that a possibility? Of course. So as long as you know the percentile chance of you succeeding to, to like these huge goals is very low, if you go into it knowing you're probably gonna fail, but you're excited to try and see if you can beat everybody else, right? It's, it's you against yourself, right? You're not competing with anybody else in reality because like you just have to do better than you did yesterday because no matter what, no matter what H3H3 posts, they're still gonna get millions of views, but you still gotta keep working on yourself and making your videos better. You can't try and beat them, you gotta beat yourself. But we all are competing for your attention. So if you go in knowing that, you do have a higher chance of succeeding because a lot of people hear that and they'll be like, you know what, fuck it. I don't even wanna try. And there's a lot of people who won't even make it this far into the video. And maybe I get that the beginning was a little bit lackluster comparatively to the end here when I really started getting into the, just the stream of words of me just talking. Um, hopefully you made it this far. That'd be cool. If you didn't, it's whatever, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know down below if you have a YouTube channel. I'll check your shit out. I'm not gonna tell you if it's good or bad, because that'd be fucking mean. Um, just let me know. Put it down below. Oh, yeah, don't ever ask for sub for sub. That's a huge tip. Okay, bye. Patreon.com if you want to help support us. One video up there. Smack that for a subscribe. Two videos over there. Never ask for a sub for sub or a shout out, because that's never gonna happen. But comment down below what kind of uh, videos you want to make or what videos you are making. And talk with people if you want to a little bit in the comments below. All right, guys? Love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Mwah.